On this edition of Around BCC, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts has grant money available for businesses looking to improve the skills of their workforce. How aware are students of the procedures to take in the event of an emergency? And with Halloween on the doorstep, we have some holiday treats courtesy of BCC's Culinary Arts Department. Welcome to Around BCC, I'm Keith Tebow. We welcome you to our monthly program where we talk about the news, events, and people at Bristol Community College. You know, Bristol Community College for quite some time, but particularly since the recession started 2008-2009, has been heavily involved in working with local businesses to retrain some of their workers to improve their skills so they can be more efficient within their businesses. The Workforce Center on Duval Street is the center for this workforce training and I'm pleased to be joined today by Rob Vitello. He is the director of uh, workforce uh, development and training at uh, Bristol Community College. Rob, thanks for joining me. Oh, my pleasure. Always glad to talk about worker training. You know, it, it, it's been very important worker training here at BCC for a number of years. Um, how important is it to, to get businesses to realize that there's opportunities for them to get training at little or no cost to help improve their efficiency and just the general workforce that they have within their companies. Oh, absolutely. And Massachusetts is a great uh, state in which to be doing this work. And I thought I'd start off by mentioning that, you know, even from the president's office, President Obama has mentioned the important role that community colleges are, are playing yeah. in building the regional and state economies uh, of the future. So here in Fall River, and uh, there's great opportunity. And Bristol Community College, with the vision of, of uh, President Spraga, you know, has been invested heavily in this. And that's why we have the new uh, Workforce Center down at Duval Street uh, that's been going gangbusters. Let's get right into the nuts and bolts now of how businesses can take advantage of some, some, some funding on the state level that will help them pay for some of this training. There's a workforce training fund Correct. that's currently available for businesses in Massachusetts to tap into to receive funds to help train their employees. Talk about the fund, how much is in it, and how has BCC benefited from uh, working with businesses through this fund? Great. Well, that's been a primary focus of my job. Um, the workforce training fund program has been around since 1999. Mm -hmm and there are three different programs. The important thing for the businesses to know is they're the ones who help fund this program. Right. So it's a, un, a surcharge on the unemployment insurance that all businesses pay that creates this fund. So the first one I'll mention is a very simple one. If some companies now are starting to hire. I mean, it's, it's been a slow, the recovery's happened. The adding of jobs has been the second wave of that. So. Right. And we want to let businesses know if you are hiring a person who has been unemployed for six months or more, or if they're a veteran, there is no wait period. And there's a very simple grant uh, called the Hiring Incentive Program where we can assist you, but it's really very straightforward. That can get you up to now $5,000 to train that individual in whatever specifics they need for the job. That could have a supervisor training them. It could be sending them out for computer training or a certification they may need. So you invest in this employee who is either veteran or been unemployed for six months. You can get this funding to help reward you. It's an incentive. That's why they... Hence the name, the Hiring Incentive Training Program. And, and hopefully very little red tape, it sounds Th like. This one is very simple. meets those, those right. criteria. The next one is geared for businesses that have under 100 employees. That limit was recently raised. It was only eligible up until last month to uh, companies that had under 50. Mm -hmm. Now it's been raised to 100. And BCC has a number of courses that are listed on the state's database. Okay. If a small, so a smaller company wants to train their person or send them to a training that BCC has, we can help you fill out the paperwork, you send your employee, they get trained. Whatever the cost is, the state will pay you half of that. Mm -hmm. They'll reimburse you half of the cost. So that's another attractive program that uh, not as many companies take advantage of as they should. 
The last program is where I spend most of my time. That is the larger grant program, which is a competitive process, right. and that's called the general fund. So that's the one where you can get up to $250,000, wow. uh, depending upon the size of your company and how many people you're sending to training. Mm -hmm. So a small company is going to not get that. But we've worked with a number of companies, uh, both in Fall River and, and New Bedford, uh, that have received some sizable, sizable grants. Mm. Now, in terms of um, BCC working with these these companies, um, what's been uh, the uh, response in terms of how ha how has this workforce training fund uh, and BCC? I, I mean, I, we talked before this that there's quite a bit of money from this fund that has gone through. Uh, training programs that BCC has has worked upon. What is that number and, and right, how well, important uh, is it? Right, well, I've been in, on board just about a year now. I started September uh, 2012, and over the course of the year, we've been able to win grant awards just under a million dollars, so uh, $980,000, $500,000. Uh, and two of those are large manufacturing consortium grants. We're working with six companies in the greater New Bedford area on an advanced manufacturing training regimen. We have 13 different trainings that are going on and going to end up training over 300 workers. Um, and from lean manufacturing to being effective communicator to project management. It's a range of training. It's all geared to making those companies more productive, to growing their business, and to growing jobs here in the region. Now, there's a lot of growth area. We've talked about this before um, on different editions of, of, the, of the program where we have talked with other representatives from the center. Um, there's some green energy opportunities that are, that are available, and there are others as, as well. How, how difficult is it in terms of your job, to, if, if a company comes in and says, I need training on X, Y, and Z, um, maybe something maybe the college hasn't pursued before, how do you make that connection between someone who can train those employees mm -hmm. and the company that needs those skills? Right, well that's a good question because uh, my role is I try to help link some of the academic side to the, to the non-credit side, right. but all the training we do and that I've just described is customized. Right. So we say, we can, you need it, we can do we it. We can find it. And we can find uh, the right people. So we actually spend the time to develop that training course, design it, find the, the best instructor, and hopefully we can get the grant funds that will underwrite the cost of the training. So we work in all industries. We're working you know, with South Coast uh, Hospital on developing a specialized medical assistance program training. So we know the different funds that are available. We know and we can help you access those. Make sure that there's minimal heavy lifting on your part. You just have to be committed. You have to be able to support your employees right. while they go into training. That's the key part. Mm. Um, and you have to be willing to, to spend the time to, to go through a grant process. With advances in technology on a number of, of different um, professions, has there been any, any um, determination on um, how underskilled some current employees are in this region and, and how important it is for businesses to take advantage of of making their employees better skilled for, you know, better efficiency, higher wages even for some of the employees? Right, absolutely. Um, uh, I think most companies realize, or they should, that their employees are their competitive advantage. Mm. Um, uh, if we can improve their skill level to where there is, you know, m much of the process here they're, they're, they really do need to be customer service focused. They have to have that quite understanding, both external customers and your internal, interdepartments, whether it's manufacturing or, or healthcare uh, or the service industry. Um, so we need to make, so we have the, the means to make sure to assess what are those training needs in the company and how if we focus some strategic training, that's going to improve. The one thing in the, that the grant requires is you have to say, how is this training going to change my operation? How is it going to boost performance, efficiency, quality? So, you know, we're talking about to companies, and when they see 
that return on investment, as it's called, mm -hmm. from the training dollars, it's almost a no-brainer. They say the state will help us pay for the training. We're going to get these efficiency gains, these improvements, be able. It's really a win-win-win because the employees get new skills as well. Is that something that your office also helps in in trying to figure out how more efficient a company can be if certain training is done so they can help with that, that Sure, that we, coach, we coach them through the process uh, because they're the ones who will know. Right. Uh, so we make sure that the right people are at the table at the company, the engineers, the managers, the supervisors, and we say, you know, what are your trouble spots? What, you know, if, you're, if you have so much waste going on uh, and scrap in your process, you know that, mm -hmm. and uh, the goal would be, okay, if this training can improve the operations and, and, and the way people are doing things so that they are doing it right the first time and you're not having to do a rework situation or scrap, you're going to know how much that can cut down on scrap. You're going to be able to place a dollar amount on that, so they know. Mm -hmm. uh, we help them to walk through the process and document it so that we can put it in the grant, and it's a winning grant. It's a compelling, it's a compelling grant application. And I would think that you know, even though in, in this portion of our program we're talking about how businesses can take advantage, if you're an employee at one of these businesses too, you may be able to say to your your boss or the owner of the, a small company you may be working with, hey, this may be something I, I may want to learn some skills that will help me personally and professionally, but also help the business as well. So it's obviously a win for employees as well because Absolutely. what they what they learn may equate to higher wages. Right. And in that circumstance, you know, whether it's a especially if it's a smaller company, the one I mentioned which was under 100 employees, that that express program I mentioned is is designed to handle ones and twos. So if someone needs a particular training, right. um, you know, that's great. So we'd be happy to you know, that, that you should talk to your, your human resource or your or manager uh, to see what opportunities might be there. We'd be happy to make sure it's very streamlined, very simple to understand and, and straightforward. It seems like the trainings that are offered by BCC, uh, you said they're, they're highly customized in many, in many uh, cases. And I would think they wouldn't fit a traditional semester course load that, we, that traditional students here at, at the college have. Uh, so there's, there's really like no start date, no end date, is that correct? It's just whenever it's needed. And how long can some of the training take? How short can it take? Can you give some examples? I know it will be dependent on, on what is actually offered. But. Right. Well, um, you know, we would do an effective communication course which talks about teamwork and, and what it takes to work in a team and how to uh, give feedback. Um, you know, we might have an effective communication class that lasts from anywhere from 18 to 24 hours. Right. And for a company, we do that on site, so it might mean meeting three hours a week over the course of a number of months. Right. To accomplish that, they have, they have projects that they're working on in the meantime. Uh, they get some material to support their learning. So um, most of that, as I mentioned, is on site. Mm -hmm. We certainly have a whole array of computer classes that we offer at our Duval Street uh, campus. Uh, so we have uh, companies sending their employees down for some customized, again, Excel training or, or access, or uh, even Word and Outlook, you know, using, being more efficient with using you know, those tools. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, it is a range, and that's why you say customize it. The grants you mentioned, uh, the one in a, remind me to tell you about the session we're coming, we have right. coming up, uh, but those, the general fund program is the grants written for two years. So mm -hmm. a lot of companies will include a number of trainings in right. that one grant, and they'll do them at different times. Uh, they might even want to run 100 employees through an effective communications class. Well, that'll take us, you know, a number of groups to do that. If we grew, do it in groups of 15, that'll take, you know, seven or eight groups right. to go through that. Right. Well, one of the things we wanted to promote, because later on this month in October, there's going to be an information session on these workforce training grants that are being offered by the state. It's going to be held when and where, and how can people get more information? Right. It is going to be on Wednesday, October 30th in the morning, 9 o'clock. Uh, at our Duval Street uh, Commonwealth w Landing. We have a new name down there. We're the Workforce Education Institute. Right. 
Uh, and I am, again, the director of corporate services, so I'm putting on this training. We're bringing Mike Corcoran down from the Workforce Training Fund program, and he's going to talk about all the nuts and bolts, what it takes to apply, what the matching components are, all the ins and outs, and how to write effective uh, an effective application. So it's just an information session, so it'll go no l later than uh, 11 o'clock or so that mm -hmm. day, and uh, there's a, there's a sign-up. Uh, they can contact my office. We'll be publicizing it heavily over the next mm -hmm. uh, uh, number of weeks. But um, we enc encourage any company to, who wants to find out or training providers who, who want to find out or if you help companies, uh, you, you'd want to be there. What number should people call if they have any questions? Or Sure. My direct line is 774-357. Uh, okay. Two one six five. Okay, I have I'm it here. It's oh, on the screen. Good. I'm hoping it's on the screen because we just uh, updated our extensions to go along with the new um, institute down there. And my email, if you go through the the uh, website, uh, bcc. Uh, dot edu forward slash workforce center. Right. They can get to us too. One of the things I wanted to bring up while we wrap up here was uh, this past summer. Uh, the uh, Workforce Center was, was greeted by Governor Patrick. Yes. He had some good things to say about the program. Um, also, there was a, uh, another grant that the college received as part of the Green, Green Initiative and in getting people involved. Uh, it looks like BCC is really a model for the Commonwealth in terms of how to train workers, uh, not only displaced workers, but workers who are underemployed. To, uh, to get better skills, and that must feel good with you, for you and the people at the center. Oh, sure. It's been, as I mentioned when, when we started out, it's been a great uh, vision of uh, 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 President Spraga and uh, Joan Menard, you know, who, who's really been a visionary with the Workforce Center. So I think there's a lot of good things going, around, going on around the Commonwealth. Uh, with a lot of our uh, partner community colleges. We're happy to have this opportunity down here in, uh, in, in the Greater Fall River, New Bedford area. And, um, you know, and we've been making the most of it. We yeah. even had a number of legislators come by right. uh, this past Monday and held one of their caucus meetings at, our, at the Green Center down at Duval Street, and they toured the facilities. So we are getting a lot of interest. It's a great facility, mm. and you can come down and go to lunch at Jerry Remy's there, there uh, afterwards. Right nearby. So again, we invite you to take part in the Workforce Training Fund Information Center at the, uh, the Workforce Center Institute on Duval Street in Fall River. It'll be on October 30th, 9 a.m. Again, if you uh, want more information, you can contact Rob at 774-357-2165. Rob you Patello, you, you Director of Corporate Services, thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. My pleasure. It. Thanks for having me. We'll have more of Around BCC right after this. Welcome back. We're pleased to have three students interning with us on the show this semester. The students will be producing a segment for the program each month. So without further ado, here is the premiere edition of Student to Student. Hi, I'm Denise Pumaguaye. Welcome to Student to Student. Our country has gone through some tragic experiences involving mass shootings, such as the Newtown, Connecticut. We wanted to know if our fellow students are prepared if faced with an emergency situation while at any of BCC's campuses. If there is an evacuation, I am running off the campus as fast as possible. Um, well, I leave as fast as I can. I notice there are signs to follow, but I'm not really sure about it. I just calmly get up and head towards the nearest exit. I'm um, not exactly not at the moment. I just started coming here. Run off campus. <laughs> um, honestly, I do not, but if I guess, probably just leave or something. I don't really know. Vice President of Students, Steve Ozok, says the college is updating its preparedness plan and has made its findings available to students, faculty, and staff. He says, depending on the emergency, simply getting in your car and leaving the campus may not be the best course of action. Every student should have the mindset that they are going to personally be prepared for an emergency or for a crisis. So if an evacuation was called, 
and it was an evacuation where you needed to get away from the grounds as far as you can, as quickly as you can. The last thing you want to do is jump in your car because that will guarantee you you'll be sitting there for the next hour. We just want you a safe distance from the building. You're not going to be getting in your cars at all in that case, but we need you to go to one of the identified assembly zones, we're calling them. And we, what we did is we built a 500-foot perimeter around the buildings of the campus. And anywhere outside of that 500-foot perimeter is considered one of those assembly zones. So the 500-foot zone, just to put it in perspective, without having to remember where they exactly are, would be the far side of the pond on the north end of campus, all along Ellsbury Street, uh, on the sidewalk along Ellsbury Street, or lots 6 through 10. Follow Vice President Osuk's advice. Learn about BCC's emergency plan and don't forget to sign up for Be Notified. For more information, visit the BCC website. I'm Denise Pomaguaye. Thank you for watching a Student to Student. Thanks, Denise. BCC is in the fifth year of sponsoring the One Book Project, where curriculum and events are developed around the content within one text. It's been a successful run in the five-year history of BCC's One Book Project. This year's selection is In the Heart of the Sea by local author Nathaniel Philbrick. The story looks back at the events in the 1800s when tragedy struck a whaling vessel which collided with a sperm whale. One book committee member Sally Gabb says there are approximately 20 faculty members who are integrating the book into their curriculum. The, the number of faculty using the book has grown a little every year with some folks who have a very strict curriculum, for example, things like the nursing curriculum or the engineering curriculum. Sometimes it's hard to fit something like a, a whole book into the curriculum. We are encouraging instructors, that's why we tr announce it in the spring and try to get people to think about it while they're developing their curriculum, um, to pick a piece of the book that might be useful in their curriculum and relate to what they're teaching so that you don't have to use the whole book. And I think by making that clear, we are expanding the number of people who are using the book. Gab says the One Book Project is a great way to encourage the college community to read and connect a book to their lives. The One Book Committee has a number of events planned around in the heart of the sea. For more information, check out the BCC website. Most people view Halloween as the unofficial start of the holiday season. We're pleased to be joined this month by BCC culinary arts instructor, Chef Gloria Cabral, who has some fun Halloween cookie ideas for those trick-or-treaters. Hello, welcome to our Bristol Community College Culinary Arts Kitchen and Bake Shop. Today we'll be making cookies. One thing you want to work with when you're working with cookies is a nice, good sugar dough. And a sugar dough that when you bake it, it's not going to stretch very thin. So what Ken does here, and this is my student, Ken Perari, he's in our baking program. He made the dough all the same thickness. We chose the same size cookie cutters because if they're small cookie cutters and big cookie cutters, you want to make sure they're on separate pans because they will cook at different times. Now these are finger cookies. You know, when you say, oh, finger cookies, you're just about the size of a finger. Well, these are a finger. Very simple by taking some of the dough and rolling it to the size of your finger. And well, your finger is a little bit different than a child's finger, so you make them kind of big and cute. Very simple to roll. Roll one out. And you make them kind of rough because remember these are old cratchety fingers. And when he tends to put them on the pan, you can even make them a little bent, a little arthritic, which is kind of scary in itself. And he makes he marks it with a knife or whatever. These are bench cutters we always use because this is a professional kitchen. And it gives you the ridges in your fancy. These are old, scary fingers myself. And he puts them right on the sheet pan. He'll make a whole bunch of these. And these are all about the same size, back to that same thickness of cooking them. And they always need a fingernail. So what we like to do is a little bit of egg and water. And I'll put them on every one. Nice and easy, nice and neat. And that becomes our glue once it comes in the oven. Press that in. Put a little bit more on top because it gives it a little shine. See, these would go in the oven. The next step is what they call flooding. And flooding is what you want to put as a very thin layer of royal icing. And royal icing is a very simple thing of confectionery sugar, egg whites, and you mix it together. Some people add other things to it. Nice thin layer. That's all right, keep going, keep going. 
and it's all right. Sometimes they tend to go over. And if it starts to go over, I just what I'll do is with a spatula, I'll just bring it right over and let the whole cookie be covered because I, as the kids say, the more sugar, the better. If it's really thick, see this is how it's nice and smooth. Sometimes I'll help it out a little bit with a spatula. You know, when people aren't used to working with it, we do an outline and fill it in. Just like when you learn to color, you outline it and color it to stay within the lines, and it helps you a lot. See? That's right. Now you can put it. That'll be nice and smooth. I'm just going to work with what we have here. Just to give you an idea of what can be done. All right. That'll be. I'll take some white. Just think of it as yellow, red. And you can marbleize it and make it your own. And he's just adding, making little leaves and to give it a little couplers. And couplers, I can just take this off, change my tip. If I'm using a brown color or whatever color, I can use three or four different tips to give me three or four different effects. See, there you go. How about some brown eyes on that cat? Maybe it will show, maybe it won't. A little bit. Just make little, give them little two eyes. And at the end, you'll see the different things we've created. Leaves, beautiful for a table. Just flood it and finish it with this. And our wonderful fingers. See, scary. Um, project for you, your family, the kids, a party, a Halloween party. Change the theme for Christmas. Uh, Easter, Easter. The children will love to do that. I think almost as much as the adults will have a good time doing that. You can start decorating with rubber gloves and put red food coloring or food punch. If you fill these and freeze them, you can put them in the bowls so they pop up. But I just put them right here to put the cookies on top with the fingers. And then you fill up a bowl full of fingers for the kids. You can make a cherry dip and think they can put it in blood, which is really fun. We package just a couple up in a nice clear bag. And then we put plates of different things out for our guests. I always leave some without icing because not everybody likes a lot of sweet on their cookie. All the wonderful cookies you can make, all the good times you can have. Think of it from holiday to holiday. Well, thank you for coming to Bristol Community College Culinary Arts Kitchen. It's a great place to be. We would love to see you at our events, and happy holidays. BCC has prided itself in recognizing the achievements of its faculty and staff. And the college recently completed a visual display dedicated to the longevity of its employees. Each year, BCC recognizes employees who've worked at the college for at least five years and at five-year intervals following. This summer, the college put the finishing touches on a sculpture garden which commemorates employees' years of service. There are six sculptures in the garden representing various stages of plant life connected to years of service of BCC employees. The sculptures are titled Sprout, Flower, Blossom, Leaves, Fruit, and Seed. Artist Nancy Selvage created the sculptures with the thought that there'll be a long-lasting monument to those in the BCC family. There was discussion about, you know, which should represent 25 years, 30 years, and how many people might be on each pedestal. So we ended up having the sprout be just sort of the introduction and representing all of the employees, you know, up to 25 years who weren't getting, you know, individual nameplates. And then both Blossom and Flower represent the 25-year people. The Sculpture Garden will recognize employees with upwards of 45 years of service. The garden is found just outside the Grimshaw Goodowitz Art Gallery at the Fall River Campus. That'll do it for Around BCC this month. We head back to the Art Gallery to look back at the art exhibits Perseverance and This Bright Morning held last month at the Fall River Campus. I'm Keith Tebow. Thanks for watching.